the tune we're going to look at is called Focus and it's from my last full length album entitled Focus and it's probably the most, uh, the, the glitchiest and most insane track on the album with the, the most processes through it so I figured this would be a good one to look at to give you an idea of kind of the furthest that I would ever go with the track. In this episode of ADSR we meet Bill Day, better known as Mr Bill. Mr. Bill has been hard at music production and sound design for years, and his online Ableton Live tutorial videos are always well watched. We met him at his studio and asked him to break apart one of his songs and give us a how-to along the way. If you're into time stretching, beats, great melodies and bass lines, you're in for a treat. Generally I write uh, glitchier, uh, glitchier based music. Um, I guess it's like a mix of really swung out sort of heavy things and um, you know, just weird bass lines and stuff. I try not to generalize it into a particular genre of music. I just try and uh, write whatever interests me and generally that is a lot of edits and kind of weird jazzy interesting feels and things like that. And, uh, I use a mixture of a lot of third party plugins and a lot of just Ableton Live stuff. So generally Ableton Live is like the housing for all of my stuff and then I use um, a large array of plugins, uh, things like, uh, if I just go through my plugin list, I've got like Zebra 2, Complete 8, um, a couple of Isotope plugins like Alloy 2 and Ozone 5 and you know, Reactor and a bunch of shit from Contact and uh, Silence and a lot of uh, other UHE stuff. There's a good plugin pack called Ubic which has some nice stuff in it. I use, uh, to do all my orchestral stuff, I use something called Play, which is made by East West. And then I also use Melodyne to tune things up sometimes. And yeah, apart from that, it's just all Ableton stuff. And then I also incorporate a lot of warping into my work. So I'll take like a, a sound, um, like a bass line or a drum or something, and then I'll render that down and I'll stretch it. And then I'll render that down again and I'll stretch it again and then play with the pitch. And you get like all these weird, interesting artifacts and stuff. And, and this track really kind of, um, shows shows that if we listen to like just one of these sounds here um, they're all generated from like the one thing they're all just generated from a kick drum so they're just all warped in different ways and then I chuck them in samplers and do things like this make them do like weird wobbles and stuff and uh, this is like the same thing in another sampler just being pitched down. And then there's also like an array of just really fast edits over the top of that. Like. And again, that's just a clap sound that's been stretched. And that one there, that would have just been one kick drum stretched and then turned onto texture and then play with the pitch so it kind of repeats itself. Same with this. It's just all texture mode and pitching. Uh, well, I've been like composing music on a computer for maybe six or seven years now, but only really seriously for maybe f four and a half of those years, or maybe even five of those years or something. Yeah. Um, before that, I was just in bands playing guitar and stuff like that and writing music for band stuff. Generally metal, but I was open to whatever really. Um, yeah, I try never to put myself into one genre. Yeah, four albums and I think like roughly 10 EPs and I think like just remixes all over the place. Like I've got heaps of remixes on adapted records and heaps on Simplify and stuff. Um, I, I really don't keep track of them anymore, but yeah, mainly my four albums are the ones that I do keep track of. Um, I sequence everything in uh, in arrangement view, and generally I use uh, audio, but I use a, a bit of MIDI as well, but I find that MIDI is a little bit temperamental and it doesn't quite sit exactly where I want it, and for this kind of music you really have to be very particular about having things sit in the exact same parts and having things uh, re-trigger at the same time every time rather than... Uh, rather than 
having problems with MIDI where it doesn't re-trigger at the correct time and stuff. So I, I generally render everything down into audio and then just kind of set all my start points that way and I find it's a little bit less temperamental. Uh, with this track I started with um, this sequence here up in the top left hand corner and if we have a listen to the beat it's real simple. So I would have started off with that beat and then over the top of it there's just a lot of different samples and all these samples are things that I've added to it um, after writing the initial beat. So. <laughs> So I just turn, um, I turn this grid into like the smallest possible, so usually narrowest. Then I just zoom in and just drag parts around and then apply like fades to things, for instance like this one. It kind of builds up into this hit here, so we get like... And everything's just kind of pulling and pushing off each other and yeah, I find that you can't really get that particular with that sort of stuff unless you're doing it this way. Um, so in this uh, project I have a, a close to 115 channels and then four sends and all the most of the channels after 85 are turned off. Channel 85 is just a chain input for, um, for something, I don't know what it would be for, probably for these square waves and then below that there's a bunch of like Vakoda stuff and all this vocal stuff that I actually never used in the final version. Oh there's a little bit of vocals I think. Though. All those like pingy kind of sounds, they're all done with vocals. Um, all this stuff here. All that's all done with vocals, like taking a vocal and then just stretched it and then put a ping pong delay or something on it. And then I've just kind of turned it into a melody that interacts with this Rhodes chord. And then there's obviously like a drum beat over the top of that. Um, and then yeah, there's a lot of channels, like uh, all this stuff in the middle here is just for beats. So if we listen to that, it's just a nice snare and a nice kick and then there's two channels for effects. So this is just a reversed version which is probably done with reverb. Um, and then this one is another reverberated type of kick sound. And then there's everything up the top that comes before that beat section is generally all glitchy stuff. So just all really kind of tiny edits. And then just like random little hits and stuff. And then everything below that, there's like all the melodic stuff and all the bass stuff. So um, for instance, this channel here, this is a bass line. So the way I've written that is with just a lot of kind of chords and stuff. So I've just created lots of chords in the bass. If we just play like... So I just created like a chord but then started playing with the filter. So you get like... So we get that sort of sound, but then just be really particular with all the, the chords and changing the velocity so things aren't interacting too heavily and then also playing with pitch bends. Like I've got a lot of pitch bends in here and then the end result, yeah, sounds like this bass line. <laughs> Yeah, I don't do any of it with like playing around with uh, controllers and stuff. I don't think you can get particular enough with a controller. It's good fun, but you can't get it to that kind of point. Then all these chords, the same thing, they're just all drawn in. And 
they just kind of reiterate the melody that the bass line's doing. And then just a beat under that as well. And then there's all these um, chunks down the bottom where I've rendered my master channel. So what I do is I take the entire bounce of the tune and then I render it through the master back into a new audio track. And then I edit the master in different ways. So here we've got like the entire track being pitched down in a sampler. Same thing there, there's like a, a sampler that's playing back the entire master and then a pitch bend up and down so it goes And then there's some wobbles on the entire master which again have been bounced down into samplers. And I'm using like a filter or um, a looping function or a filter delay or something to, to affect it. Uh, well that first one there was with the auto filter in Ableton. And then I'm just uh, uh, cycling through the start point of the master bounce sample. Uh, this one here is like a um, probably a derivation of uh, that that first wobble which I've just rendered again and then distorted and put a flanger and a bandpass filter on it so it kind of sounds like it has its own character and then next to each other they sound like this and then this one is just the same thing I've just taken like chunks of the master and chopped it up and then put a filter on it same with this one that's just one chunk of the master with a vocoder on it and then just repeated so if we take for instance take this vocoder off um, and then we just play through that entire sample, we get this. It's just a pitched up version of the master. If we turn the pitch down, you can hear it's just a, a render of the entire track. If we pitch it up, it just turns into some weird shit. And then if we turn the vocoder on and just repeat the first section of that, you get... So if we play the whole thing, we get this. So I do lots of little things like that all through my tracks. This one is just a stretched version of that original sample. You can see I've just taken like a snare hit and just stretched it, but it's a it's stretching like the, the entire bounce of the track. We turn the warping off. You can hear that it's just a snare. Um, or if we <coughs> turn the warping off and drag this sample out, you can hear it's like an entire bounce again. <laughs> So what I've done is, yeah, bounced it and then just stretched it. And then whilst I've stretched that, I've deactivated every other clip that's happening at that time. So the result is like this entire section, if you listen to it play. Kind of like it when my tracks start somewhere and then end somewhere completely different so i try and not kind of do the whole verse chorus thing like we have this section here at the start which is this kind of really weird glitched out bit and then what i've done is i've bounced that entire section down into a master um into one channel and then we just have this singular channel here where i've just edited the whole thing section here um, we could probably make that a different color it kind of turns into a bridge and then that bridges into that next bass line After that section it goes into like this big kind of square wave thing which is just three different layers of um, I think operator yeah it's pretty simple it's just operator with a long release square wave and just playing like a um, 
they're kind of like a counterpoint melody, I guess. Like one of them's doing like one thing, and then the next one's kind of playing a lead over it. And at the same time, this section speeds up into a um, 110 BPM, I think. Yeah, 110. So yeah, we've got like that. And the next bit is. So it's just like a real simple kind of bass square and then. So that one there's got like a LFO on the pitch using a frequency shifter. And yeah, if you play them all together, you just get this big kind of wall of square waves. And there's also this melody down the bottom here as well. And the way I'm doing that is by applying a pitch envelope to the, to the synth. But what I'm doing is uh, I've got like a long release on the square wave and then having uh, the note pitch up by 12 semitones um, every time I let go of the note. So if I hold a note and then I'll let go of it, it'll keep producing a note, but it'll pitch up by 12 semitones like this. And then if you play a melody like that, you kind of got to um, be really careful with your end points as well, because all your end points create another note and it like slides up to them all at the same tempo. So. Um, this would be another thing that would just be impossible to play, really. And then we just play all the square waves together, you get like a... And yeah, it slowly ramps up to 110 BPM and then it has like a little bridge. is just all chopped up weird bass lines. So that's happening over like five different channels. Um, and then on this one here, there's obviously a bit of automation happening on there. So you can hear it's got like this weird release that, that sounds like a probably a vocoder. Yeah, it's being sent to this send channel C or just on that last note. And then that's sending it through a ping pong delay and a flanger and a vocoder. So you get that. And yeah, so the, the track doesn't really repeat itself. It starts off with that glitchy bit and then goes into this edited bit. And then there's a bridge and then it goes into this like new baseline then ramps up to 110 bpm through this square wave section and then goes into that kind of heavier glitch hop section and then just after that um, there's another bridge and then comes into this like soft ambient nice section yeah and then at the end of that it kind of just trails off into like a, a roads but yeah this this track's kind of particularly weird because it um, has a tempo change in it and kind of flows between all these different styles and um, I didn't like sit down and think oh I'm gonna write a track that does this and does this like I just started at start and then kind of kept writing and just got a, a new idea and then was like oh, okay I've got a cool idea like put a bridge here and then start ramping up the tempo or something and yeah, just playing around with it that way. Yeah, I think collaborating with people is probably the main way I learn most of my stuff. Every time I collaborate with someone, I always learn something new, and I find the other person always learns something new as well. So I think it's like a really natural kind of way uh, of learning, like where you just learn off each other and kind of bounce ideas back and forth, and then everyone kind of you know gets more out of it. And Tom Cosm's tutorials helped me a lot. Reading the Ableton manual helped a lot, and then just watching random tutorials on YouTube as well.